All righty. Well, all right. Welcome, well. Torre, to the very first podcast of L Dubs Investing. Welcome. How are you? I'm doing very well in this Saturday, beautiful. Excellent. <laughs> Alrighty, so once again, thank you for get, jumping on and spending some time with us today. We wanted you to get you on the channel so we can talk about your experience and what you've been doing, how long you've been in the crypto industry for, where you see Bitcoin going, you know, how you're looking at making money and profits in cryptocurrency, how you're currently staking as well to earn a passive income, and obviously what your overall goals are. For cryptocurrency and where you ultimately see the market going. All righty, Atore, talk right. to us about how long you have been in the crypto space for, how long you have been buying for, and how you've had to change the way that you've been looking at cryptocurrency and mm -hmm. how you've been buying and or selling in the whole space. All righty. So I've been basically buying for the four years. Well, I'm not fully four years. In January, it's going to make four years. I'm in crypto. So uh, since I got into crypto, FOMO in um, and learn more about crypto and what actually Bitcoin is, um, I've been buying since then. I've been dollar cost averaging. Um, I changed the way how I lived. Uh, let's say I used to spend a lot of money like going for fast foods, uh, buying stuff that I've didn't really need it. Um, and I thought, well, blockchain is something that I can, you know, invest to be something for my future. So I changed my habits of like not spending money in stuff that I didn't need, um, eating healthier, not going as much. So every time like I thought, uh, today I'm feeling like, you know, some KFC, some McDonald's, um, I would hold off and using that money to then invest. So today, if I felt like going to McDonald's and usually I would spend $15, I would not go to McDonald's, get that $15 and put into crypto. Um, so I've been doing that for the past three years and a half. Uh, yeah, a lot of people thought that was like a bit crazy to do it. Yeah. Like, uh, but I was like, no, it's something for my future. Uh, so I don't think it's crazy. Um, you know how it is. People used to make fun of, uh, you know, crypto and stuff. So far has been working out good. <laughs> yes, excellent. Well, like I said, you know, the, yeah. uh, the herd mentality is when everyone's having a go at you for what you're doing, you know, you, you might be onto something. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's the old saying, when everyone's giving you a hard time, it's because they either aren't educated into the space, they don't understand the space, or, you know, exactly. you're so early to the party that, you know, it's probably a good thing to look at jumping mm -hmm. in like you have and you've been and that's uh, the thing people don't have to you know put their life sims in it it's just like i, I did i started small like with a coffee i used to have like three cups a day i'll reduce to two cups a day which is like healthy for me and at the same time start buying slowly you know so at the same time i'm still like buying what i want but at the same time i'm still investing so um, dca DCA. Yeah. DCA is, that's one of the best strategy is DCA buying slowly doesn't matter the price don't look at that don't worry about that uh, most of the time crypto goes down like a lot but when it goes up it goes up fast and quick and really high so so you weren't happy with an average return of 10 percent on the stock market there you wanted a thousand percent is that what yeah. you want yeah <laughs> yeah look investing something that I always wanted really I always well, like I was always good like saving money um in 2009 that's when funny stuff that's when bitcoin was created right like came out like public kind of thing I was in Italy and I remembering um looking to invest in stock market so I went online I want to trade like learn how to trade and stuff like that so I, I went online uh downloaded some maps um sign up uh, invest, I think, was like 300 euros at the time. Uh, but I didn't really fully understand the trading and how it worked and stuff like that. I put my money in and next day I thought like it was gone. So I was like very confused. And instead of like having the mentality of like trying to learn more and like researching before actually putting money in, uh, I would probably like 
at that time, I'll probably do it done well if I actually stop to learn. And I'll probably come across Bitcoin when it was like very early. It was oh, like only, less than a dollar. If yeah. only. But <laughs> like, can you, like, like most people do the mistake of like quitting. So at the time, I'm like, uh, maybe that's I like, I didn't really like these talks. I'm like, maybe that's not for me. And that's, I decided to quit um, until like I got into crypto and, and like it's something that I like because it's like very different from, you know, uh, stocks, uh, bonds and all that kind of stuff. There's like a lot to it. You know what I mean? Do you get yeah. any questions from friends, family, anyone now regretting when you were saying you were getting into crypto? Are you getting any people saying, oh, I should have listened to a Torre? You know, have you been getting any of that lately? Yes. Oh, I got that all the time now. And I mean, sometimes it's like satisfying, like, yes. <laughs> but I feel bad because I wish they would like listen to me, but yeah. now I'm like, oh, that, you know, because I, I, I used to tell them all the time the, when they used to, you know, criticize me and say, you're going to lose your money and all that stuff. And I said, please just trust me, like put like a little bit or like, just do like I, I did, you know, 3%, um, yeah, save, right. yeah. yeah. Save a little bit in there. Like, I don't know, put $10 a week, $10. It's yeah. like nothing. All right. Um, and look, these coins, what I put $5 and that become like $700 with $5. That's like more than a uh, hundred X. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. This coin, like uh, Solana been doing very well lately. Uh, a year ago, I put $50 in that and that becomes like three grand and a half. See, you know I, I, missed, mean? Uh, I, missed, I missed that completely. I didn't have yeah. anything in this. No skin in that game, and, mate. No skin. And that's the thing. You don't have to put a lot. People mistake like, oh, I don't have money to invest. I'm like, like you can invest with 10 You can invest $5 a week if you, if, you know, if you don't have money. Like in Australia, for the wage that we receive here, I think like nobody here has like a real excuse to know like, you know, unless if you're like going through like, uh, lockdown stuff like that where it's like really hard uh to find a job and stuff but if you have like a full-time job i think you can easily invest in crypto even if it's like a small bit like that makes a lot of difference in like well there wasn't that uh, australia didn't have any sort of stimuluses like united states they had a more of a welfare system where if you were laid off you were paid but if you still were currently employed the government didn't really give you any subsidies did they so um, it's one of yeah. those strategies. So when you were first investing into cryptocurrency, like you said, you started with said four thousand dollars. So $4, obviously, $4, you know, you don't have to be transparent here, but obviously, you've turned that into more than six figures by now. So obviously, exactly. you, um, yeah. Uh, the first year, I was learning a lot. Um, didn't really invest a lot in the first year. Uh, I was like more learning. I got into like some bad project. Uh, lost money in there. But learn a lesson. That's that's the thing. You never actually lose money. That money that you lost basically is like a lesson. That's right. So you just take that lesson and keep it going. Uh, so you don't repeat it. So you know, take that as a lesson, don't repeat it, and keep moving forward. So you know, eventually I learned like to stick with the main coins, like the top one, like Bitcoin, Ethereum. Uh, the ones where there's like an actual project and there's yeah. like some robust. You know, uh, there's uh, liquidity and you know, just stick with that. And then most of my part of my investment was on them, like on the big ones. And then I slowly with like a bit, we start investing in something more like risky that can give me like higher returns. Uh, I did something very crazy in my second year, second year of crypto, uh, second to third year of crypto. So about like a year and a half ago, um, where I decided to get low ones. Um, We'll talk about that um, later in the video uh, where you have like, you can do high farming yields. Yep. Uh, yield farming, what they call. Uh, so I got about three loans <laughs> <laughs> to go all in. Um, use two credit cards. So basically I got like a lot of debit because in my second year, like second year and a half of crypto, I understood. I, I did a lot of mistakes. I already learned from them. And I really stuff kind of understand how blockchain works and how it can play a big part in the future. And I noticed that's something that's here to stay. Um, it's not going to go away so easily. 
So I thought the risk was worth it. So I started getting loans, which I don't recommend to people because <laughs> especially if you just got into crypto, don't do it. But if you're more like experienced, like have three years and crypto has been to like a cycle kind of thing, then yeah, it's something to consider. But yeah, um, because in the uh, yield farmings, you can get a return of more than 50% a year while you're paying your low on like 13%. 10 percent you know what i mean so it's like worth it uh the risk but so, yeah, you were very well you would already learn through your mistakes to get to that point so that we'll discuss point. that down the track but it's not something that someone that's new to the market should be experimenting in because they could lose everything no way so. yeah they could lose because that's the thing when i learned my mistake i didn't have much money to invest so my mistake they were very low in terms of um percentage like money you know what i mean so i didn't lose much money to learn my lessons uh but yeah so if you if you got like a lot of money and you go all in when you just got into crypto then your mistake is gonna it's not gonna be like a 200 dollars mistake you're gonna be like a five grand dollars mistake you know so yeah yolo you have to go slow yeah <laughs> Alrighty. Well, that I think that uh, that that's a great story there, and it obviously it teaches some of the the new audience here on L Dubs Investing that we're all about educating and showing others the path that others don't really want to walk, and obviously getting into the details of you know financial education in 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 that in that respect. So I think we can uh, jump in. I, I heard that you've got you've got a chart set up for us, and you've got some uh, some details to walk through. So you can let us know where your thoughts are and where the market's going, where you think the top mm -hmm. is. Um, if you want to let us know what your top bullish thesis is and obviously where your bearish thesis is, so then we can walk mm -hmm. through um, We can walk through that. So why don't you um, get into that? So yeah, um, at the moment, I'm looking at this shot. Um, so uh, sorry. So for all the new people that are watching right now, do you want to just give us a quick detail? What are all these lines? What do they mean? Uh, and obviously, uh, you're on trading view here. So for all the newbies out there, they want to know what we're looking at first. Yeah, so this is a trend view, uh, Bitcoin to US dollar. Uh, it's a bit mess like this because I've been using like for a while. So when like we were here, I start drawing this line. Uh, the reason why I, I like to keep them in here is because they play a, like a big um, role in the future. Uh, let's say this line here, um, white line, I draw when we like close to the bottom, when we form this, right? Yeah. So I mark from this um, start of the bull market here uh, to the bottom. So you can see in the future that played a huge part in here. Uh, as you can see, when we had that Corona kind of dump, mm -hmm. we kind of got a spot in here. And then from here, we just went all the way up, mm -hmm. right? So I like to keep this line. Um, What's your trend? They can always, trend line, yeah. Crypto respects trend lines a lot. Yeah. So. so as you can see, there's another line that got support into it. Uh, when we got in here, that's when I draw this one. And then it came, retest the same line and came, retest the same line and go up. Uh, this one I, I draw, like this one I drew when we like at this top, when you start getting the dump, I draw this one here. And it, as you can see, it came perfectly and retest that. So yeah, crypto always found this line. Uh, the one I'm watching right now is like this one. Uh, as you can see here, was a support. Came here, support, breakdown. Came here, kind of retest this too. Breakdown, hold down here. Came here, test it again. Uh, broke into it. And now we're in this kind of like flag in here. Uh, just playing around. So you've the got here. the 20-day the moving average close, 50 close and 200 close. They're the green, yellow and red lines? Yes. Uh, so here I'm on the three days chart. Um, usually I like to keep on three days chart because uh, it's it gives more like a big picture uh, what's happening because I'm I'm looking more like in long term. Um, I used to like when I first got into crypto, start looking like very like you know short term kind of thing. But now I like to keep like eyes on like the big picture. That's where you wanna keep focus on. Um, so at the moment, I'm looking at this flag. If we break here, I can really see us coming down to 36, 37 uh, with a small stop at the 38. But right now, we have to see how this play out, which, which can take up to November. So 
Yeah. Uh, my worst case scenario in case if we break down uh, would be the 200, which at the moment see the 25 grams in American dollars. Um, but that will be kind of like the bottom part. Below that, we still have $20,000, which was the previous top, which yep. is holding a lot of the, um, the support. So I don't think it would ever go below 20,000. Yeah, 20, I, so. I don't think we ever Unless it's that, a especially now that we have craziness. <laughs> yeah. But now we have, um, you know, institution and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't think we go below 20. Uh, which for me is fine because now I got into like um, getting percentage, like staking and all that kind of stuff that we're going to talk later. So even if we take, I don't know, another three years to go up or breaking this top again, I'm still making money um, and accumulating. So so now yeah. that's your bearish thesis. So where what's your bullish thesis? Where, where, where do you see the top for Bitcoin? Do you see it happening in 2021? And if it is going to happen... Where do you see it uh, topping out? All right. Uh, my bullish thesis, I'm just putting the logo here. I'm here on the BA. Um, I'll make it full screen. BLX. Yeah. So this is the uh, BLX chart, which hold the whole history of Bitcoin since uh, 2010. Uh, so I don't think we hit the top. Uh, yet a lot of people think we did but for me like tops they usually happen like this right so like the first top in here in 2011 you have a sharp uh, skyrocket kind of thing and then you have a sharp decline which form like a top so you never like have a kind of like a rounding top you always have like a kind of sharp you know yeah. you have up and down so this was like one and then a second one was in 2013, but this bull market we have in two parts. And I, I'm pretty sure the way we are now is kind of similar to 2013, where it goes up really quick, it doesn't sustain, and then we have to come down for then going to the second part, right? Uh, in 2017, we had this, um, we have this build up which lead to like a one part kind of yeah. uh, market cycle. Uh, Cause we didn't went up really quick and fast. We took a time, we took like years, like about two years and a half, like forming that, you know, like accumulating kind of thing. And then had like a health, like kind of round button, like hitting the top. So you can see even the top here was sharp, went all the way up to 20 grand and then a sharp decline, and then that's when we started uh, the bear so your buy, Your buy there is right at the top there, is it? Your first buy? Yeah, my buy was uh, around <laughs> right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, But listen, that's the good thing about crypto. Even if you get here on the top, if your dollar cost average all the way to like the bottom, your price would be average. So your price would be right here at $8,000. Mm -hmm. So next time when we go to 20,000, like we did in here, you're already making like more than double profit. It's That's all right. about like a matter of like time. You just have to, you know, keep dollar cost average and just accumulate how the max you can, because as you can see here, once we break, we go, look from here, we went all the way up like 400% in a matter of what? To, reach that 154 days so up that's like four yeah. months four yeah. months and a half you know like when we go up we go quick in four months we can do four hundred thousand percent i mean four hundred percent sorry uh if but I'm... yeah <laughs> yeah but you can see this top here we went kind of quick so we couldn't sustain this but you can see how it's like a rounded top it's not a sharp yeah. decline we did a round you didn't have a blow top. off top like you didn't have yeah, exactly. your blow off. Yeah. exactly a blow off top like so those other ones quickly um give us your quick bullish thesis now if we're at 45 let's call it 45,000 us now and mm -hmm. we're in the mix of september and september are traditionally for a bitcoin cycle is where bitcoin almost tops out towards the end of september into october by halloween so where mm -hmm. Where, what, what do you see it doing in uh, the next six to eight weeks? Look, usually 
Bitcoin has a blow off top around December, right? This time, I think because we need more time in here, I think we might top off after December. It might start off like next year. Um, it's all depending how long we take to break this top. Because once we break this top, I think is really, we're going to go up really quick. Maybe not 300,000. That's a bit. Uh... Yeah, not 300,000. <laughs> but for the metrics, how I did before, um, if you do like a metrics from the previous top, like from this, from like my, from cycle to cycle, right? Yeah. So this, this top here, you did about 6,000. From this top to this top, it's about like, you know, almost 2,000. It, 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 um, it, it, it kind of like third, yeah. Yeah. Third, yeah, yeah. So from this one, if, if we, I don't know, if we put like half, yeah. it should be like 900, who take us, you know, to about almost 200,000. But I don't like to, I used to be like, oh, maybe we could go like to 3,000, like 300,000 or 400,000. This is a very like unrealistic. After being in the market for three years and a half, you start being more like realistic. What, like, it's better for you not expect much because if it doesn't happen, at least, you know, like you didn't expect to go really, you know, crazy. But if you don't expect much and go really crazy, then you're like surprised and but like a good surprise, or you're like happy for that happening. But it's always good to be realistic so you can actually uh, have, uh, you know, have the, be prepared to take profits. Um, so my realist target for this bull cycle will be about 150 to 180 thousand. I think we can easily hit that because for the price to go, that is only 800 uh, percent. I think is a very realistic. Um, so my plan to take profit, first of all, I'm not taking any profit if Bitcoin doesn't reach hundred hundred thousand dollars because that's i think is a very easily target for us to go uh, it's just like a matter of well, time that's a it's, psychological a hundred thousand you know six yeah. digits that's a be a very psychological number for bitcoin to to overtake i mean with bitcoin being at a hundred thousand what would that put the whole market cap up would that be i mean it would be like 10 trillion or something wouldn't it It'd be something ridiculous a huge market cap yeah. it would take huge amounts of finance to to put into the cryptocurrency space however if we are so early um you know institutions are looking at jumping in you know we see it in the news every day i report on it every other day about institutions getting into the market you know is, is that possible yes it is uh i believe because gold is like 12 um 12 trillion ma uh, market cap right so if bitcoin is is better than gold, especially now in this digital age where everything is like just digital. So we don't really need to be investing like, well, not investing, but like using much as gold, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like something physical, everything these days is like digital, everything's on the internet. Uh, if we only take, since look, just have like a perspective. Gold itself is $12 trillion. If Bitcoin takes gold uh, market cap, that would put like Bitcoin at half a million per Bitcoin, right? But Bitcoin is supposed to be kind of like a global currency that everyone yeah. can use. So it can go even higher than gold because, you know, gold is treated more like has investment and, you know, uh, dollars not backed by gold anymore. So I think for like a digital global currency, we can go really high than that. So in the future, I do believe in like in 20 years, Bitcoin will be trading like to a million dollars each, uh, especially now like we have El Salvador uh, having yeah. Bitcoin has legal tender. That's just the first country. I don't think it will be the last. Yeah. Uh, more countries will start accepting uh, and more people will start investing. So, so your I bullish thesis would be, would be January 150 US would be your yes. virtually your bullish thesis. So, and mm -hmm. your bearish thesis would be, um, you know, we, we've touched it, right? And we're, we're looking to head yeah. down. Is that correct? Look, my bullish thesis would be 150 to 180, but it's always depend how, because I'm, I'm invest for the long term, right? Yep. I don't depend on this money because I still have a job and everything. So I'm working, I don't depend 
my investments for the long run. Uh, so I'm not taking any profit before Bitcoin hits at least like hundred thousand dollars, because that's what I I think is gonna be worth it by the end of this year. Um, so my plan in case if they reach or go above, it's, it's going to depend on how the momentum is for the market. If it's really bullish, um, like you start going crazy, even if it's below 150, yeah, if it's below 150 and everything's going too crazy, then I must start considering taking profit because when everything is too crazy, that's when you like kind of, that's, that's like a sign of that's the sign everything and you have your friends saying oh we're not gonna go head down anymore we only go up from that's here right. at this top right here i had my family my mommy invest right my mother so around right here i've told her to be careful because we we're going high like high too quick i said we're going high too quick we did like we broke 20 k's and we didn't come back to retest we're just going up yeah and it's like no but you know like everyone's talking about, you know, countries adopt Bitcoin. We're not going to head down. We only like going up is, you know, we won't see this price here. And I'm like, that's a sign for me that, you know, when you have someone like that around you telling you that is a clear sign that a top, a top is in. So right here, I kind of took a bit of profit in another coin that I have, Binance coin, uh, because I need a new computer. I didn't want to really take profit, but I saw that was kind of top and I need a new new computer. So I'm like, that's a great place to take a profit and buy something that I need, you know, to keep investing and watching videos and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, around here, I took some profit um, and bought a new computer. So but getting but, back to... Yeah, yeah, you're right. So I was going to say your, your profit taking strategy or your exit strategy, um, you want to just maybe touch on that for a couple of minutes and see you know, wh where you see your profit-taking strategy and exit strategy for the market if you do have one? Look, the best strategy that I, I noticed since I'm getting to crypto is dollar cost average. Dollar cost average is not just to get in the market, but also to exit the market. Uh, because if you don't do that, you get, it's easily to get, you know, taken away, like get kind of get stuck in the form and greed because you, you want to take the whole thing out at once. So you wanted the best price. So because you want the best price, you keep, you know, holding yourself from pulling the trigger to take profit because you get the right top. But that's the thing. Nobody can ever, you know, hit the top. It's really hard to get the top, especially because tops, you know, they go and they have like the sharp decline. So by the time you sell is already like dumping. So you don't want to be get caught on that. Um, so the best strategy as well is to dollar cost out of the market as well. So my plan is when we cross $100,000, I'm going to start looking how the market and how the moment is. If I see we're not too crazy, we have more upside, I'll start taking like small little portion, like let's say 2%, uh, I take $100,000, right? If we go a bit more up, like $110, then I take another 2%. If it goes like to 130, I take like another five percent, you know. And so, so I start dollar costing out. And if I see that the market start going crazy, and like the momentum start picking up, and everything is just start going up, then you wanna take more like bigger chunks, like 10 percent, you know. Uh, my first thought in taking profit, uh, thought like in take it slowly and take the whole everything that I invested. But now that I've been in the market for a while. I think it's not smart taking everything from the market. My end goal is have like max 70 to 80% out of the market and leave 20, even if we get into another bear market, that's but right. at least that 20% can be invested. Because that's the thing, you never know. We can hit a top and get like a sharp decline of 50%. But then, uh, and you took your profit, but then let's say two months later, everything for some reason start getting crazy again. And it goes another five hundred percent. Yeah, it's like a super cycle that you didn't expect. Then you know, and you have nothing in the market, and you see everything going up, and then you get caught in the FOMO again, and you put everything back in, and then if it dumps, and then you start losing again. So, yeah, my best strategy is to leave at least twenty to thirty percent, 
and remove 70 to 80 percent depending how crazy the market is going like if you get to the cases like he's going super crazy is at three hundred thousand dollars something that i didn't expect then i might consider to take more from that 20 30 percent that i was planning to live in there but otherwise i would just leave that in there well i think so that's, um, that's gonna be my strategy you're more ultra bullish than what i am i had I had a top of about 120,000 this cycle. I um mm -hmm. my strategy is to start taking profits at around 90,000 uh, Bitcoin mm -hmm. price. But like I'm the same as you though. I I would never sell all my Bitcoin. I would always be invested mm -hmm. and always DCA into Bitcoin like always to build up much bigger positions. So I think that's uh that's a strategy that I'm doing. That's a strategy that you're doing, and obviously it's been um. It's definitely been paying off for you. So, oh, that's great. So why don't you jump um, in? Yep, you got something? Yeah, um, in regards to that, before I had the plan to remove everything because I was only investing in kind of Bitcoin, but because I diversified my portfolio and get into altcoins where they go a lot higher, then I plan to leave a holding of Bitcoin always there, like for the future, you know what I mean? So I use altcoins to kind of buy Bitcoin leave in there for my future. Uh, so I don't have to sell everything anymore. Uh, so I can just, yeah. Uh, in regard to the bottom, because even if we get into a bear market from where we are now, the worst case scenario would be this line here, the 200 week um, moving average, which we never broke. As you can see in 2015, the, in the bear market, there was a bottom, right? Yeah. So they hold the bottom. The last cycle, they hold the bottom again. And then we had the corona dump, which hold the bottom again. So even if we come down from where we are, the worst case scenario that I see would be $15,000, which if, we, if you can see here, there's a line here, which would hold a very good support for Bitcoin, right? Yeah. So around here, that would be the worst case scenario. For someone that has been, when Bitcoin was at $3,000, $15,000 wouldn't be the worst, you know? That's right. So I can easily hold through that. And I think if we had to go in a bear market and hold around here 15 to seventeen thousand dollars i think the next move will be gigantic uh even higher so i'm happy with that <laughs> absolutely absolutely i think that's a great uh, that's a great way to look at it so why don't you jump into binance and what you're doing there with your staking strategy what's been working for you um and anything that you can share with the audience that might give them some insights into a uh, a potential passive income for them, not just a buy and hodl strategy. Yeah, uh, look, uh, when I got into crypto, it didn't have much of the, like there was staking, but not as much until it came DeFi, DeFi which is uh, decentralized finance, where now there's a lot of projects that pay you to, you know, just leave your money there, uh, get percentage. And yeah, so there's a lot of like different places where you can, do it but i like to keep it safe so one the place that i use is binance uh where they do have a staking section so if you go to binance you can stake your coins and what i like about that because it's a section where you have a guaranteed passive income without risk Right. So you may, your main concern is like losing your coin if you're staking a platform yeah, absolutely. Uh, or different projects. It's like I had placed like where I lost a little bit. Uh, but if you want to be safe, which I learned how to be safe now, I go to Binance where they have this section for staking where the money, your money is, is stuck with them. Right. So they paying you a percentage to live uh, in that. And you're like free of risk. So you can't really lose the money unless, you know, if someone hack your account or something like that, which another topic like we should talk about, like security account, how to do that well. Uh, yeah, but right now, so you have the staking, uh, which guarantee there's a high yield, uh, uh, sorry, high uh, yield, um, where you can get more percentage. But these ones, they are a bit more like risky, like liquid swap, um, where you provide liquidity to, you know, coins like this one, this one. Uh, I didn't really get, I, I tested that, but I didn't really like it. So I stay out of that one. I prefer like smaller passive income, but like uh, free of risk, if you can say that. Uh, 
less so risk. the best option less for risk. yeah less risk <laughs> less for risk. who there's never no risk <laughs> yeah there's not never um, <laughs> like what i mean like with no risk like this section here where you don't lose your coin so the, the like it's in the platform so you don't technically can lose your coins uh, one thing i like by this because they have a fun in case if that happens like someone hack your account or hacking everyone account then they can like um repay you oh. so because yeah because i never really like exchange because if you you get hacked then everything's gone uh so you the my recommendations always have like a offline wallet like a cold wallet yes cold uh, wallet. like a ledger right. trezors uh but the reason I started using more Binance is because they got hacked once, right? They got a big hack. I didn't get affected. I had money in that, but I didn't get affected. But everyone else that got affected, they repay every single user. There was not a single user that didn't get paid. So that gave, like, that gave me like trust, like a platform where I can trust my money in case if things go south, they have a backup plan where you know they refund the users. Um, Apart from that, they added so many measures. They add, um, so you have the authentication. You have to yes, do authentication yeah, factor, right, on yeah. your phone. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Two factors. Um, you have email. You have uh, mobile uh, tax. So let's say if I want to redraw money today, I have to confirm by email. I have to confirm by tax. They send me the code by tax. And I have to use my authentication as well. My two factors authentication. So there's a lot of, also, I can only redraw to um, address that I whitelist beforehand. So if it's a different address that I didn't, you know, redraw before, then it will be denied and won't be possible to redraw. So there's a lot of like security involved now with Binance. So That's I'm like good. very confident. Well, obviously, a, um, a ledger is... Uh, a... I never recommend it, but... Yeah, a ledger is option. um a cold Especially wallet. because, yeah, yeah. yeah, especially because now ledgers, these cold wallets they you can now stake with them that's right you getting passive income in a cold wallet that's something like very like new but unique like you know like very good that's some very good because nobody can hack you and at the same time you can still make profit by just holding uh so yeah so there's a section of staking binance uh which you can leave that and redraw anytime you want so it's a flexible kind of thing there's a section of locked one this locked one is these are uh, you can get a higher income, but this means you need to leave your funds locked there for like thirty days, six days. You can select, um, and you you can redraw early if you want, but if you redraw early, then you lose all the gains that you made. So you just basically get your money back, but you didn't, you know, get the profit back. Um, but yeah, if you leave at the end of the the contract or like the lock period, then you get a nice income. Uh, there's a saving one. Saving uh, is a bit low, the return, but you can move anytime. You can put it in today. You can put it out tomorrow. Um, yeah, there's no fees or anything like that. So it's, it's good as well. So it depends like the person, how the person thinks, you know, what's best for her, for it, them. So, uh, but there's other section as well. There's a Ethereum 2.0, uh, which should come next year. Uh, this here, you can get your Ethereum, you stack, uh, you put for stake, and you get from 4% to 20%. It depends how the pool is going. Um, you have the BNB vault. The BNB vault is like a yield aggregator, like it says in here. You leave your, it's most like who hold BNB coins in this case. That's for like specific for, for Binance coin, uh, which is one of the, where I made most of my passive income, to be honest. Uh, because in Binance Vault, you're gonna have a small percentage, it's very slow, but holding your money here, you can participate in the launch pool, uh, launch pad that they have, um, which I'm gonna talk about soon here. So it's a very um, good place to live if you have Binance coin, uh, which is one of my favorite coin uh, so far. So, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, your BNB strategy has been to obviously buy and hold on the platform, but obviously stake it in through BNB to earn yourself what a four per eight to eight percent return 
um, on your coins that you've already bought on top of your capital gains that you've probably gotten from the increase in the price. Exactly. So Binance coin, since uh, that big hack that happened with the platform, it got my attention. Uh, I really like the platform and they always trying to create uh, different ways where you can use uh, they talking. So I'm like, this is a great investment, uh, you know. So I decided most of my money are turning to Binance coin uh, at that point when I learned more about the project. Uh, and then, yeah, the return has been great. Apart from the return from the actual coin going up in value, uh, holding the platform, you could, you know, farm different coins, different projects, basically like for free and free of like risk, you know, like all the, like all the project where you invest your money and then you get all the project coins, but at the same time, you can lose the coins that you're staking with the platform. So here was, yeah, um, I've been doing Binance um, for like two years and been great because I've been getting good returns with this launch pools. So there's two different um, place, there's launch pool and launch pad. So the launch pool is when they get different projects, they, they find interest and it's more like, so they go like a lot of verification from that project. And if they like, they see it's like the risk is really low, they put in the platform. So this way you can hold your, your Binance coin that and get their specific project coins for free. Oh, you know? wow. And then you have the option to hold that if you think that's a good project and it's going up in value, or you can turn that coins that you got for free and buy more Binance coin because the more Binance coin you have, the more you make from this project. So that's my first strategy when I got into Binance was to get these free coins, turn into Binance coin, which made me make more of these other project coins. So I keep this cycle going, getting more Binance coin, farming more of this project, getting back to Binance coin. So I kept in this loop. And another good place as well for you uh, holding your Bin uh, Binance coin is in the Launchpad. Uh, the Launchpad is when they kind of like have a partnership with a project. When it's like a project that's really good, they're like, oh, we want to fund you. We want to be partners. And so they really they release in the Launchpad. So usually these ones are the most way you want to get into it. Uh, these are like a little process, depending on how much coins you're holding. Um, the more coins you hold, the more you can you know, participate. It's kind of like a lottery system. Uh, you have kind of to stake Binance coin and they will let you participate if you get selected, right? Uh, there's like a, um, a lottery system. So if you get selected and you, you can buy a little bit of the project, the launchpad, you don't get, get it for free. You have to buy with your buy, buying B. Um, but if you get to do that, like the Vox project where I pay $200 in BNB, and that two hundred dollars became seventeen grand, you know what I mean? Wow. Uh, because you buy really low in this project, and because they are so good uh, project, when they release in the market, everyone wants to get in, and because it's so hard, because you need to be selected to buy these coins, everyone has to buy from the market that, that coin, that project specific. So the price goes so high. Uh, one of the one launchpad they had was uh, the Safe Pal, which like kind of a ledger, like, you know, like a treasure, a ledger yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. wallet. So they have this partnership with this new ledger. Uh, they released the coin on market and went 50, uh, 15 times in price. Wow. Um, 50, no, oh, sorry. It was 50 times. Not like 50, 50 it was 50. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I sold very early. I made like about 20 grand out of that from like a $200, you know, <laughs> buy. <laughs> Uh, it went way higher, could make like 50 grand, but I was happy because I didn't lose money. I made a lot of money from $200. So Excellent. You, that, that's another thing in the market. A lot of people, that's another feeling that you always going to have that you could make more money. More money. That's and you're right. like, oh shit, I should just wait a little bit. But that's the thing you never know because if I hold a little bit and didn't sell for 20 grand, what if the price actually went down? Everyone starts selling, it, you know what I mean? It could go to like, you know, 5,000. I could make 5,000 instead of 20. So at the end of the day, if you're making money, you should be happy. Uh, doesn't matter the value. Profit's profit. Uh, and it's not a loss.
What else? What other have you got a, another platform there that you use? Is it Pancake Swap or is it uh, what else do you use there for your staking? Yeah, so this Binance is more like in the safe side. If you want to go a bit more risky, there's DeFi where there's like different platforms where you have to use like a MetaMask wallet. Uh, we, at the moment, my favorite one is uh, Pancake. It's one of the first projects to launch when um, Binance had the Binance Smart Chain, like start become decentralized, where people could create like project on top of just like Ethereum, you know. Uh, big Binance Coin, you couldn't build anything on top of it because it was just a coin from a platform. And then they create the Binance Smart Chain, which is a different chain for people to build smart contract. Like Ethereum, Ethereum, the success of Ethereum is because people can actually build stuff on top of it, like different projects. So when they came with that, um, with the Binance Smart Chain, uh, they start having different projects where you could stake, you could, you know, earn passive income. Uh, one of my favorite was Pancake because I only took the risk because Binance was twitching um, on Twitter about Pancake Swap. So this mean like Binance kind of like uh, help them and like the project and what they were doing. So it gave me the, enough confidence to get involved. So I bought a lot of um, Pancake, which here I will show the platform how it is. So basically you have to have your uh, MetaMask with some BNB coins and uh, for pay for transactions, which is very cheap. You pay like 50 cents to a dollar. Um, and if you have pancake um, tokens, you can go to pool. And here you have like different types of where you can stake, right? So there's different, you know, coins you can uh, earn. Right now I'm doing just, if I go here, just stake only, I'm only doing this um, project, which was another one uh, from Binance Coin, a Binance platform where they did a launch pad. Uh, it's a project that I'm interested in, so I'm staking my cake and earning back this token uh, in a 66 uh, percentage annually, so APR of 66 percent, which is a lot. Like most that's banks pay that's you, huge, you yeah. know. Not even a percent yeah. now, some of them. <laughs> they take yeah. your money in Europe. <laughs> Europe, there's a negative. Yeah, exactly. Right now, so. Yeah, if you have negative interest. So that's one of the, the places where I took my loan and Turn, uh, bought with that loan that I took, personal loan, I bought pancakes um, and then I'm stacking them because my personal loan paid 13% annually, right? And here I'm earning 66. Yes. So I can easily pay my monthly repayments in my loan and at the same time I'm making money. So as you can see here, if I'm like 400 and something dollars in like 24 hours, um, so yeah, it's great. That's huge. That's huge. So you make uh, so your strategy that you've been not only are you been buying and uh, buying tokens, Bitcoin, DeFi projects, but you've also been um, staking on certain platforms to get yourself either free tokens at a minimal risk. But because mm -hmm. you've got the experience where you've gone through a bear market, you've gone through where you've lost lost money. Uh, false projects and now you know now you've kind of at the point where you can navigate through binance and pancake swap with minimal money you can actually be compounding your money uh you know say said 66 percent return mm -hmm. which is it's unheard of considering um you know like you said banks you're going to get one to three percent if not negative interest rates so i think that's uh mm -hmm. that's definitely something to emphasize a way to not only compound your um, earnings by price appreciation, but you actually are earning a yield as well, which you could call it a dividend yield if you want to use it as, yeah. um, you know, to relate to stocks. But, you know, you're looking at 3 4% in stocks considering this this project here is at 66%. It's actually, it's actually phenomenal, these returns. Exactly. And one of the great parts that I like about this, if you look in here, it goes like every three to five seconds, it's paying you out. So you can remove these gains at any time. You can put back to the platform to Binance, you can transfer to token there. And from there you can redraw to your bank account within five minutes. So you're basically getting paid 
your percentage every five seconds. So you don't have to wait like a whole week to, you know, get the money out. You can take it any time. So that's like the greatest part. And my recommendation if someone is doing like this is sticking with like the most like trust kind of platform like PancakeSwap, Binance, uh, because like you said, there's always risk. So it's better to minimize this risk going with something that everyone trusts. And because everyone trusts and they want to do well, even if something goes wrong, they will probably have a secondary plan to help with the, like help users. So yeah, uh, it's always good to have that back, backup plan, you know. So to earn said $500 in a day, Roughly, without giving too much away, how much BNB are you staking to earn 500 USD? So this one, you have to actually hold pancake um, tokens. Like, as you can see, it's take cake. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. So the one that I'm farming now, I have about 23,000 cakes. Uh, which have been accumulating when it was like really low levels, when it was like a dollar fifty cents. Because yep. if you see the price is at nineteen dollars, nineteen dollars, um, yeah. nineteen US, yeah. yeah, around there. So it is great. Like if you're getting in a low level, you can stake, um, and that's the thing. Your return is based off the price, how the market is now. Let's say if in, I don't know, in a year the price is double, so you're earning, you you're gonna start earning double what you're making right now. So that's what I like. You have the um, the upside from the actual token you're holding plus the passive income that you're actually making. It. So even if I needed money, I can always redraw what I'm um, what I'm earning without having to touch what I'm holding. So that's a really great strategy to make money. Excellent. That, that's actually um, phenomenal. So you're you know 12, 18 months away from never working again. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Well, if my plan go, if Bitcoin goes to one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars, uh, altcoins will do just less, less, like less um, push they did from a year ago. They did like 10, 10 times to hundred times. They, this coin that did like two hundred times, you know, return. If I'm like, if you put in like in a conservative level, like ten x for altcoins from here, then I'll probably wouldn't have to work next year <laughs> you know um my goal wasn't like to not work it was just because i used to work seven days a week in three to four jobs my goal is to make enough income so i don't have to work in four three jobs seven days a week so having like one full-time job until i don't know i have and been like and secure enough to not work at all um which brings another point as well because i'm a gamer and in crypto now, we start coming the gaming side of, you know, um, things. So eventually people will be able to game and make money at the same time. So if that works well, I wouldn't have to actually have a job. I just, I can do what I like, which gaming, you know, at the same time, make an income, a passive income. That'll be like really great. Well, I think we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to definitely do another um, touch base with you and you can discuss through what your nft strategy is obviously your gaming strategy as well because i think a lot of people would be very interested in knowing how you can earn income through gaming because i know other than twitch or you know ad revenue um to earning cryptocurrency through gaming i think that would be an actual um, great uh, passive income for a lot of people that are wanting to have some fun, but also look at yeah. earning some income as well. I think that would be an excellent thing. So, um, all righty. Um, well, is there anything else that you'd like to take us through? Anything else you'd like to say or anything for any of the new new people coming into crypto? Any, any future advice that you've got for them? Well, advice for now, I think since we are like kind of in the middle of the bull run, I would say so. For people that are new to crypto, um, just take your time, do a lot of research because, um, yeah, your first year is going to be really, like, rough because, like, crypto used to be a, a lot simpler, like, three years ago. Uh, even though when it was very simple, people would think, like, would see it as, like, really complicated. But now things start getting a bit more complicated because there's more to it. There's, you know, gaming, there's like DeFi, staking project, you know, there's all sort of different projects, different things coming up 
uh, to crypto. So yeah, take your time, research it, see the option that has out there, um, be safe, you know, you start with like very low, like just test it out first, because if these things go bad, you won't lose a lot of money. Like, you know, let's say you find like a project that interests you, go with $10, you know, if you lose that $10, is only $10. At but least you, learn, you, you want to invest you know, what you're willing to lose is exactly is what it is. Um, so, um, never invest exactly like money you're depending on, um, you know, but yeah, just go slow, do a lot of research before you get into projects and investing. Um, yeah, start slow. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, all righty. Well, thank you very much, Atore, for coming onto the channel and explaining what you are doing, taking us through Binance, taking us through Coin, uh, sorry, Pancake Swap, and obviously giving us your bullish and bearish thesis on cryptocurrency. We're more than happy to have you back on the channel. Let's try and do this more often so we can go back and talk through what you are doing, educate others and show how easy it is to make money in cryptocurrency, but it is still a risk, but you can obviously reduce that risk using the right platforms and having the right education. All righty. So thank you very much, Atore. Thanks for having me.